Shandon Presbyterian Church, it is good to be with you today, even though virtually. My name is Jenny McDevitt, and for those of you that haven't had a chance to join us in worship uh, in this past week or so, I am the new kid on the block. I'm the new pastor in town, and it is my delight to be with you today. The welcome that you all have offered me has been so warm and kind and loving, even while we are staying a bit distant from one another. So thank you for that. I look forward to getting to know all of you better. As we have gotten in the habit of reminding you, ministry continues here at Shandon these days because our ministry is never limited or defined by walls of any sort. So know that last night your session met. We had a wonderful meeting and the highlight easily was hearing the faith statements of our confirmation students. We received them officially into the membership of the church, though we will not confirm them until we are able to do that in person in worship together. I want to offer a special word of thanks to Reverend Molly Spangler and her team of teachers, Mary Ann Massey, Richard Kinnett, and Clay Timms, as well as all of the mentors and students themselves. It was a remarkable thing to celebrate, and we look forward to celebrating with all of you in person when we are able to do that. Our backpack food program, bags were packed for that and were sent out for the last time before summer today. So thank you to the volunteers who have continued to make that important ministry happen during these days. Looking ahead a little bit, a reminder that Youth Sunday will be June 7th. Two of our young people will be preaching and several others will take part in leading worship. So I hope that you will make a special effort to join us on that day. A note about this Sunday. I'll be preaching from Jeremiah 29, and there is a part in that text when the Lord encourages the people that in the midst of what are difficult times to still uh, build houses and plant gardens, or in other words, they are encouraged to continue living the lives they have been given. So we'll think about all of that together, but particularly in light of the instructions to plant gardens, we will do a little bit of that together this weekend. At 12 o'clock, so shortly after our traditional worship time would conclude, uh, so beginning at 12 and continuing until 1.30, I will be at the church sitting under the portico, and we invite as many of you as would like to come to the church by car to enter off of the King Street side entrance to drive underneath the portico, spend a moment or two introducing yourselves to me, and then you will receive a plant that you can take home and put in a pot in your home or plant outside in your garden, but in some way it is an opportunity to mark this season of our life together as a church. So I hope to see many of you on Sunday. It will be um, a moment of brief introduction because we'll have a lot of folks coming by, but I hope to see many of you there. So to help you, to help carry you from now until then, some words of encouragement. Some of my favorite words from the Apostle Paul come from his letter to the church at Philippi. So I'm going to read to you a few of those words from chapter 4, and then an excerpt from an essay. The essay is titled, We Were Made for These Times by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And I think hearing these two pieces in conversation will be an encouragement to you, or at least that is my prayer. So hear these words, first from the Apostle Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, 
Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. And from the essay, We Were Made for These Times. My friends, do not lose heart. We were made for these times. I have heard from many recently who are deeply and properly bewildered. They are concerned about our world, our country, our community, and they are right in their assessments. Yet I urge you, I ask you, I gentle you to please not spend your spirit dry by bewailing these difficult times. Most especially do not lose hope because the fact is we were made for these times. Yes. I grew up on the Great Lakes, and I recognize a seaworthy vessel when I see one. Regarding awakened souls, there have never been more able vessels in the water than there are right now across the world, and they are fully provisioned and able to signal one another as never before in the history of humankind. Look out over the prow. There are millions of boats of righteous souls on the water with you. Even though your veneers may shiver from every wave in this stormy royal, I assure you, the long timbers composing your prow and rudder come from a greater forest. That long-grained lumber is known to withstand storms, to hold together, to hold its own, and to advance regardless. In any dark time, there is a tendency to veer toward fainting over how much is wrong or unmended in the world. Do not focus on that. There is a tendency, too, to fall into being weakened by dwelling on what is outside of your reach, by what cannot yet be. Do not focus there, for that is spending the wind without raising the sails. We are needed. That is all we can know. And though we meet resistance, we more so will meet great souls who will love us and guide us, and we will know them when they appear. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world all at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul, to assist some portion of this suffering world, will help immensely. One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. A soul on a deck shines like gold in dark times. The light of the soul throws sparks and it will send up flares and build a signal fire to display the lantern of your soul in shadowy times like these to be fierce and to show mercy toward others. These are acts of immense bravery and greatest necessity. Struggling souls catch light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it. If you would help to calm this tumult, this is one of the strongest things you can do. There will always be times when you feel discouraged. I too have felt despair many times in my life but I do not keep a chair for it. I will not entertain it. It is not allowed to eat from my plate. The reason is this, in my uttermost bones, I know something, as do you. It is that there can be no despair when you remember why you came to this earth, who you serve while you are here, and who it was that sent you in the first place. The good words we say and the good deeds we do, they are not ours. They are the words and the deeds of the one who brought us into being here. And in that spirit, I hope you will write this on your wall. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe. About that there can be no doubt. But that is not what great ships are built for. Again, friends, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be being made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And in one way or another, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.